Welcome to our webinar, What's New in Court Reserve? So we've got some general announcements uh, that we want to go through before we get started. Um, I actually did not make a slide, but starting Monday, every two weeks, now you just need to come once, we're going to do a webinar on what the add-ons are in Court Reserve. Now, if you're an existing client, why would you want to watch this webinar? Well, because when you set up Court Reserve, you know, occasionally you may miss one of these amazing webinars. And so you may not even realize some of the additional features and add-ons that we have even built in the last year. So it's Monday. I think it's at high noon Eastern time on Monday. If you want the registration link, jump out to live chat and they can send you that registration link. Again, we're going to be doing this every two weeks because a lot of our new clients want to learn about the add-ons and just wanted to mention that. Don't forget, if you are a pickleball facility, building, new, existing, Club Mastermind is coming up in just a couple of weeks after Thanksgiving. It is a coming together of all pickleball minds. It is going to teach you mistakes you don't want to make. It is going to show you all kinds of how to do things, all kinds of things pickleball business-wise. Uh, this will be the third one we've done this year. It is incredible. And then each month after you get together with this group of people, uh, they have a Zoom call and it's just a continuation of how to do best practices in running pickleball facilities. So if you have uh, more questions about that or want to register, I will um, put the link in the chat below. Next, if Kim will, whoop, uh, don't forget the Core Reserve User Conference is coming up in February. If you missed the first one in August, you may want to come to this one. Now, why should you come if you are already a Court Reserve client? Well, we're going to have 50 seats. It's going to be small and intimate. It's going to be fantastic networking with other tennis and pickleball facilities. It's going to be at Daytona Beach, which will pick Tona, which is at Holly Hill, which is right outside of Daytona Beach, Florida in February when most of the country is cold. It's going to be nice and warm at the beach. But not only that, Core Reserve trainers are going to be there to take you through best practices, how to implement more into your events, how to make your programs more dynamic, how to use all those tiny little buttons and things that are that are a part of Core Reserve that can help take your Core Reserve platform and your business to a next level. If you want more information or if you want to bring a team member register, I'll put the link in the chat here or you can reach out to the live chat team. Again, we're already selling tickets. It is basically two full days of training. We're going to feed you. You're going to network. It's going to be awesome. Don't miss it. All right, Kim, I believe Kim, our amazing product leader, is going to take us through what's new in Court Reserve, and I cannot wait to learn more about this new pay window. Awesome. Thanks, Ashley. Um, so we uh, just as we go through, if you have questions, please drop them into the Q&A within the webinar and we will get those answered for you. So this is everything. What's new in Court Reserve released October 24th. Um, so we had some exciting things come out end of October, but then we also had a um, small release this week, but we released our new admin pay window. So I'll be going through that as well. So the first thing and we're using a new a new presenter today, so if there's a slight delay here, um, I apologize. But the first thing that we uh, covered on our release for October is within batch billing. There is now a setting down here under match bill, batch billing, not a setting, but a feature that will allow you to email your members. So when filtering an invoice batch, email members from these results. So what it'll do is you can actually go through and you can filter by any of your payment options. So pending payment, anybody that's completed payment or anybody like that in the status. So once you've filtered those people, you can actually go over here and email those members. Um, once you click email, it's gonna open up the email function so you can type your message and then in the next screen, um, you can send your message to those people. And so if you need to target specific groups of people um, from your batch billing or from your invoices, you can email those members and remind them that they have a pending invoice. You can email them and let them know their payment declined. Um, so it gives you a lot of extra functionality within batch billing. 
The next item that we released as part of the October release is within the member portal, um, you can now hide past events on your public calendars. So within the portal, um, you can kind of hide just things that you've done in the past. I know a lot of clubs were asking for this. So to set this up, you're going to go to portal settings. And then the setting is going to be at the very bottom of the page. Um, it's the last one. It's going to say hide past events on member portal event calendar. So if you do need to just kind of turn off what's been done in the past so people can't go back and reference, you can do that now. So the next thing we added on here for you, again, you can lock ratings on the member portal after they are set. So players are able to set their initial rating in the member portal and set them that rate is going to be locked and only admin is going to be able to clear it out or adjust the rating. So this is one that's been high on some people's lists recently or in, for a while. And so um, we were able to add and so I'll go over what that looks like because um, it is a little bit uh, complex if you're looking at the updated rating category. Okay, so over here on the left or on the right, you can see I went and I edited my rating or when you're in a rating category, you're going to first want to allow members to be able to update their rating on the member portal. Okay, so that's the first step. Once you allow this thing, there's going to be a step two where you do not allow members to update rating after its creation. Okay, so if this setting unchecked, this is going to be in. So once you open this up, this is going to reveal. And so again, it's when it's checked, the member cannot see their rating after their initial selection without an admin assistance. So um, go ahead and you can actually turn the rating on today with the rating and um, don't let those members update those ratings. Until. So they can fix it, locked, and then um, you can go in and you can um, update it later if you need to. Right. So the next thing we did was within your members report push notification. Um, we gave you the ability. So within your members report, you already have the ability to email members or text message members from that output report. Um, but we've just added the ability to do push notifications. So now if you have all three of those enabled as of as your notifications, you're going to be able to push push notice send push notifications from your members report. We've added an additional on your kiosk check settings where expired or inactive members, you can actually now prevent them from checking in if their membership is expired or inactive. So when we released this, it was actually checked off because the ability was already there for you. So if you actually go in and you can, up, you can update any of your existing um, kiosks to uncheck this setting, when you uncheck it, it's going to show you an additional message box down here that you can fill out and it'll say, you can you can just give them that message when they try to check in that their membership is active, you know, please see the front kind of thing. And with this release, we also added duper updates. Um, within duper, um, when you have the duper function enabled, um, an admin can now see the duper ID of players in the profile. So when you go look at a player's profile, you're gonna see duper, duper doubles rating, singles rating, and then their duper ID is going to be exposed here in this box. Um, we also gave you the ability to link the player if it if it by chance very rarely linked to the correct player. Um, sometimes people duplicate duper profile, maybe it linked to the wrong one. You can actually unlink it and it will allow you to enter the duper ID and link the player. You can also now with duper, you can export the day results in Duper. So this isn't going to be an automatic sync that's coming down the road, but we've at least given you the ability to, once a game day is finalized, um, there's an export button already there with a drop. The only option there previously was PDF. Now you have a format there. It's just going to put it in a file. You can save it, upload it into Duper. Where do we turn off the ability for members to add their own rating? Oh. Yeah. So if you don't want them to be able to, actually, I have this slide. Oh, up. If you, you don't do. Want, awesome. If you don't want them to be able to update their rating at all, um, you're going to just want to uncheck the box that says allow them to update the rating on the member por portal, and then they won't be able to update it at all. Um, you can only update it from the admin side. And then if you want them to be able to update it and then not be able to update it again, you'll just check the second setting down here. Do not allow them to update the rating after creation. And we have a payment window. Um, okay. Do you want to let me? Yeah, I'll get through um, the next few slides um, and then we'll do the payment window questions at the end. Perfect.
All right, so then one last update um, with Duper. We released this this week with the new payment window, um, linking Duper on the member portal. So this was one of the big questions that came out of the initial um, release of Duper was that we just synced players. We, if there was a player that didn't match, we didn't allow them to go in and link themselves. So they can link themselves on the member portal now. Um, if you have Duper enabled, there's now an additional setting under your Duper ID and your Duper settings. Allow the players to manually link in the member portal. Once you check this off, when the player goes to their player information page or their profile information page on the member portal, they've got this orange button if they're unlinked. And so if you click that orange button, it'll take them through a Duper login process where they'll be able to verify their account, log in with their own email and password through Duper, and then it's going to connect it. And they'll just verify um, on our side that they're connecting Kim Lehman to Kim Lehman in the portal, and then they're good to go. So it's a very simple process. They can do the linking on their end. You don't have to do all of them manually anymore if they don't link. All right, so now we'll get to the admin payment window. So um, I'll go through the design real quick, the functionality, and then um, we'll take some questions if there's any about the admin pay window at the end. So with the new admin pay window, we've updated some, uh, we've updated the design surrounding it. It has improved performance just because of the way the unpaid fees um, now work on that page. And then we've also introduced the ability to find point of sale items within um, these within this window as well. So I'll take you through what that looks like. So here's your new admin pay window that everybody's had since Tuesday now. Um, so as I mentioned, the first change here is all of your unpaid fees that were at the bottom of this window previously are now gonna be behind this orange button. If the user does not have any unpaid fees, this button is disabled in gray. Um, if they do have unpaid, unpaid fees, it's gonna be orange. So when you click that unpaid fees button, so the really the largest performance issue that we had around this page was because you had that list of unpaid fees at the bottom. And so the page was loading the whole list every time it opened. And then when you added an item, it loaded the entire page again. So we took it and we put it behind this button. So then you can click through and you can add any fees that you want to the order, or you can remove them from the list. And then when you add them to your summary, it's gonna populate them into the order for you, okay? Um, there's also a button here for your point of sale. If you have the point of sale add-on enabled, it's going to give you that point of sale button here as well. It's gonna open up this point of sale modal. You can find the items. This uh, search bar here is even um, barcode scanner friendly. So if you do have a barcode scanner, um, you can scan the items in here to find them quickly, add them to your order. It even gives you the functionality of discounting the items as well if you have that um, as uh, your admins and sub-admins are able, or an, able to do through your point of sale. You can do all of that from here as well. The important thing to note about this is that the fee for these items is not going to be created until you confirm and pay this window. Um, so if you were to just close the window and not complete this order, this, um, this can of balls is not going to be taken out of your inventory. It's not going to be a fee on the player's account. Um, so that's just keep that in mind as you're doing this as well. 